Hey, uh, guys. I made all those uh, suggestions uh, regarding uh, the, the battery uh, and the battery day and everything else. I already said that this thing's going to be 50, uh, 50, 70. Why don't we go out and buy some two inch uh, dowel, spray paint it up and, uh, and see if, we've got, if we can get something ready for battery day to show what we think Tesla's going to be uh, going to be cranking out. Um, what do you think about that? Anybody? Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to uh, Monroe Live. It's been a while since we've done something and I wanted to let, I wanted to talk a little bit about battery day. Now, uh, let's start off with what we've got right now. This is the 2170, which means it's 21 across the diameter and, and 70 millimeters long. With this battery and uh, this pack when it's full, you're looking at uh, 74 kilowatt hours of power that's uh, built into this product. Now, you've all seen battery day, but what you didn't see was this. Here's a little comparison between, here's the 2170, the little dinky one, and this is kind of the same. Now, I made a prediction when, uh, when I, uh, uh, before battery day, quite a bit ago, and I said probably the new form factor is going to be a 5070. Okay, but instead it's a 4680. But, but basically what that does is it gives us exactly the same, um, the same volume. So I hit the volume, but I didn't get the, the numbers right as far as the, uh, as far as the uh, uh, length and, uh, and diameter. So what's the difference? Okay, so I already told you that this is, uh, that battery pack is uh, 74 kilowatt hours. The new one with this battery pack, uh, using these kinds of products, that's going to be 130 kilowatt hours. That's that's like almost that's pretty close to being double the amount of power, and that's in the same space. So let's have a look just first off on the manufacturing that we would see if we were looking at the existing 2170. So these little doodads right here, we've talked about this before, but this is um, these are called micro channel extrusions. That's what this little holes are over here. This little black stuff that you see at the end, that's the, uh, that's the micro channel. And what goes through there is the coolant the, to keep the batteries cool. And they're cooled, as you can see, they're cooled on the edges or the sides of the, uh, the battery. And that's what you see here. You see the glue marks and whatnot. You can see that it's kind of like partially wrapping around the um, partially wrapping around the battery. But that's not the best way to cool a battery. The best way to cool a battery is axially. Axially means it's going down, up and down the, uh, the center of the, uh, of the, of the uh, battery. The, the battery heats at the top and the bottom, but the sides, you can pull, you can wick, uh, you can wick heat out, but it's better if I can sit it on top of, on top, uh, like sit it on the bottom of the uh, battery and let the, let the cooling come out through the bottom. I want you to also take note of all of the doodads that are around here. Now, we still have to have the collector plates on this side, but this side's got mm, a lot of things that maybe we aren't going to need in the future. So let's look at some of the other pieces of structure that we've got. Have a look at this right here. Now, some of these parts have been removed, but you can see here that there's an I-beam, basically, that's holding down these, uh, these battery packs to keep them in place. Now. Think about all of that and think about the steel structure around it. And then let's have a quick look at what, um, at what it might look like if we go with the new batteries. This gives us about the same density that we've seen in the, uh, in the other battery packs. This, this arrangement, if you like, is kind of like what they're probably going to be coming up with. And the battery is going to be cooled from the bottom. Okay, so over there, right over here, this is the Jaguar I-Pace battery. It's cooled from the bottom. And this is going to be probably something that's going to be close to what Tesla's going to come up with. Because if you look at it, you can see that the battery case itself is made out of 
in this case, uh, extrusions that are welded together, but it could be, it just easily be, um, a casting with cast in place pipes that would wick away the, um, wick away the, uh, the heat. So let's have a look over here at what we think is going to be happening when, uh, when, we, when, we, when they do all of this stuff. So <clears throat> let's talk about cost reductions. All right, so we already talked about what's happening over here, all right? So from now on, we're not gonna have any more individual cases. These uh, cases come as, a, as an individual pack, you can see that. The cases are gone. The, um, these, these cooling packs right here, they're gonna be gone. We still have a chunk of steel that's holding and supporting all of this stuff. It's gonna be replaced by a cooling, uh, a cooling plate. And that cooling plate is gonna be structural. So the weight will go up a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's doing something versus this thing is just holding up steel, or in this case, holding up batteries. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that everything is gonna be as rigid as it can possibly be. So these, these, um, these batteries, are going to be placed, and then if you can see these voids right here, they're going to fill that up with epoxy. And once the epoxy is in here, this is going to be as rigid as any brick that you could ever imagine. This is going to be rock solid. So this idea, I, I, I'm really excited about. Now I know all you short sellers out there are going to say, well, everybody's going to do that. Well, well, they aren't doing it. And I don't know of anybody else that is doing this right now. So I'm going to tell you what I see versus what everybody else says. Now, this, uh, this whole arrangement is going to become what we would call the structural floor pan. So we're going to have a big casting at one end, a big casting at the other end, and another casting in the middle. And that casting in the middle is usually a stamped pan. And all it does is basically keep you from uh, falling out of the car. But also, it keeps the, uh, the rigidness between the front and rear suspension systems. That's what gives you the, 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 the ability not to have the car twist. With this, this thing will never twist. This is gonna have the highest Hertz rating of any vehicle on the planet because of the way this is configured and the fact that all these batteries are now squeezed together and then epoxied in place. This, this thing has nowhere to go. This is gonna be phenomenally rigid. It'll have more safety than what the other one was. And I, if you remember, I, I criticized the redundancy associated with the battery pack that Tesla had on the three, and then a surround on the, uh, for the rockers and whatnot that also did the same thing. It, it just, it, uh, it, was, it was stupid. It shouldn't have been done. This is what we want. And then ultimately, it's gonna look a lot like what you see over there on the Jaguar I-Pace. So let's look at the, the weight reductions. If we only look at one thing, if we only look at one thing, the, this, uh, this 2170 is encased, this is encased in steel, okay? And that steel case, if we took it and uh, stretched it out along the edge of the, uh, the new um, 4680, you're gonna find out that it's about halfway around. That means that I'm going to lose 30 to 40% of the weight associated with the battery simply because I've got a bigger diameter. The ease of manufacturing on this is, is like staggering. It'll be, a, this is a cakewalk in comparison to what we've seen in the past with the Tesla battery. The only thing I did not like about the Tesla battery was the fact that it had just, it had so many potential uh, spots for, uh, for a failure. There's, there's, uh, there's, well, eight, uh, what would that be? 8,000 connections that have to be made just for the little wire tabs alone. Each one of those wire tabs is, uh, is, is wasting time. With this, we're only looking at 1,800 versus, like I say, 8,800 on the, uh, on the old, old pack. So that's one of the things that I was really excited about. I made a bunch of predictions. And one of the other predictions that I made was regarding the, uh, the casting. So let's move over here. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the batteries. Let's, let's have a look at the other major takeaway that I had uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the, the battery day presentation. So um, we all know that I, uh, I made a lot of uh, noise about the, uh, the Tesla 
uh, wheel inner. It had 107 parts at least, and it had hundreds of more of uh, welds and and, uh, and uh, self-piercing rivets and who knows what else, and laser welding. It had a lot of stuff that I didn't care for. And I said, this should be one piece. And Elon complied. And here it is, one piece. So this is actually what I was talking about. This is the wheel inner, but he added a few things. So he added the stiffener rails that go into the uh, floor pan and hold up the battery. And he also added the, uh, the, the things like, uh, like to support the uh, shock tower and, and also even places where wires could be uh, configured and put into this, uh, into this casting. This was a brilliant idea, but the, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough because he said, oh, I also need something else. I, I, want, um, I want this casting to be bigger, twice as big. So now what you've got is a casting like this on one side, but it really, it, it incorporates the whole rear end of the car. And what did he show us on battery day? He's doing the same thing with the front of a car. Oh, what am I looking at right here, boys and girls? What am I, what am I looking at here? This is a giant casting. This has been sitting on our floor since 2017. Do you know how many thousands of engineers have walked by and looked at this? Do you know how many times we've tried to present this to different companies to say, hey, this is the wave of the future? And do you know how many implemented them? Zero, none. Why? Why didn't they do that? Because it wasn't the same old, same old. Now, I realize that, um, that some folks out there in the audience might think, ah, oh, well, we'll just go and, <clears throat> Tesla didn't do anything extraordinary. They just went on, bought a couple of machines and had some guys make some molds and, uh, and that's that, right? Well, let me tell you something. You don't buy a die casting machine that can do both the front and the rear castings like what they're talking about. You don't, you, don't, you don't get that in 15 minutes. This is not Burger King. You don't walk in and say, hey, I want one of those. It doesn't happen that way. This is the, this is the kind of thing that makes a giant difference. And, and, he's, and everybody's saying, well, it's gonna take three years. Really? You think you could do it in three years? I'm telling you what, nobody, I, and we all know too that I've said it a million times. Elon always, I don't know, under, undersells what he's doing. I think, it, I think he's gonna be showing up a lot earlier than everybody's expecting. And I believe he's gonna give it to everybody again, a little bit of a surprise. So I'm telling you right now that this, this is huge. This is huge. The battery and the casting technology that they're gonna come up with is going to be basically it's going to eliminate the body shop. It's going to eliminate the job I had when I got out as a kid out of, out of high school and worked my way up in a tool maker to become a tool maker. All that work for stamping parts and whatnot, at least for the uh, floor pan and the uh, front and rear of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the structure is going to be gone in favor of something that I've been pushing for eons. This is the way to go. This is, the, this is going to be the huge difference that's going to be needed in order to make things happen. Now, I am going to make my own little a plea uh, to the folks at Tesla. Uh, I'm just not doing this for the good of my health. I'm, I'm trying to tell OEMs that are sitting there dormant that they better move in a new direction in a hurry. But I also have two of my customers, maybe three, that could really use Tesla's help. So I have Archimoto, I have Nobe, and I have Bricklin. And I, we're in the process of redesigning their cars. Now these are little cars, three-wheel vehicles that are good for urban environment. And I'm telling you what, Tesla guys, I could really use a favor. I could really use a little help with, uh, with some of the components that we want to put into these vehicles. And I want to have the leading cutting edge, bleeding edge of technology, and that's the only reason that I think I want to have Tesla, because I think everybody else is going to have problems. So if there's somebody at Tesla that happens to see this, and you can promote it to somewhere inside your organization, I'd like to talk to somebody. So with that, I'm going to close it out. I want to thank Tesla for making my day. Um, they make me a lot happy. I don't drive one of their cars, and I don't get paid by them. 
but they certainly make my, uh, my life easier because every time I've said something in the past regarding what could be the next way or the next wave of, of technology, I get a big blank stare from others and they give me <laughs> this. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's brilliant. So uh, thank you all, boys and girls, for, uh, for watching. I really appreciate uh, your support. Um, still, I'd appreciate it if you'd go out there and tip those cashiers and uh, make, sure that, uh, make sure that you keep yourself safe. Anyway, so long and Tesla, uh, my phone number <laughs> is in the book. Okay, thanks a lot, bye. Okay, with all I just told you about how we're gonna glue this or how they're gonna glue it in and whatnot, you gotta ask yourself a question. With this, do I actually need a solid state battery? <laughs>